give somebody a high five. Yes, today is good to be at Amplified Youth. Come on. So first of all, I want to say thank you for coming tonight. Really appreciate it. Um, it's a vision night and, you know, we've been yeah, praying and thinking and trusting how we're going to impact the city for Jesus. And so I'm trusting that you're going to get a glimpse to see not what is wrong in East London, but to see what Jesus is going to do. Okay, so what, what is vision? Vision is to see what could be, but also ultimately what should be. Okay? So I'm trusting, I'm going to share a few things with you guys that I want to invite you into this to become part of what I believe God is going to do in this season ahead. Okay, so my son is now in grade eight and he's gone to high school. And uh, I am shocked at what a difference primary school and high school is. It's walking into a war zone. There are just so many different challenges in high school. And, and as I'm driving through town, as I'm driving to school to pick him up, and I'm looking at all the young people and my heart breaks because I'm like, how the heck are, are, are young people doing it these days? It really is tough. Now, who's had some challenges in school? Who's had some ugly people, people being ugly to you at school or doing stupid stuff? And, huh? Yeah. It's a war zone. It's a war zone in terms of young people often hurting one another, young people influencing one another in the wrong way. And, and, and the scriptures say, you know, bad company corrupts. So if you walk into a school and, and many of the young people are, are actually bad company, it's really, really challenging to stay on track and to follow God. Huh? Would you agree? It's tough. It's tough. When the topics that are talked about, the way people speak, is really, really a, a challenging environment. And so, so we want to, you know, when we, we see it, young people struggle with anxiety, depression, bad self-image, intimidation, bullying, young people hurting one another. And ultimately you feel like, I don't know, I'm just trying to survive. And that is not what you are called to, to survive. In Jesus, you're supposed to thrive. Come on, say it. I'm not supposed to survive. I'm supposed to thrive. Okay, do you believe that's possible? I believe it is. I want to show you tonight how you can thrive in school, but ultimately through what I've, I'm trusting for this way forward for Amplified Youth. Okay, so we are X amount of young people here today. I believe there are so many others that Jesus is going to touch through your lives. That he wants to impact. But if you're just still surviving, you can't really impact somebody else. Okay? So schools seem to be a bit of a war zone, but what if this could change? Okay, so I want to give you a glimpse of what I believe is wrong and how we're going to change things. Okay? So you see the, the picture, a vision night. It's like you're putting on these glasses, putting on these goggles, and it's like heavenly ones. Okay? It's not like... VR, normal VR. It's like, it's like heavenly. HR, heavenly. You have goggles. You put on these heavenly goggles and then you see what God is wanting to do. Come on, say it. I'm putting, putting on, put, put it on right now. Come on. Say, come on, I'm going to see. Come on, press the button. Chick. Booting, booting. I hate when those things are whirly things. This is, but this is a fast connection from heaven. It is terabytes. It's like, okay? And God is wanting to show you something beautiful. Okay, so, so I, was, I was struggling with this. Why are so many young people, teenagers, you guys, often disengaged spiritually? Why? Why, why do we often struggle? Why are we sometimes spiritually weak? The reason is this. Here's a picture of a football player. Which one would you say would be the fittest? The one on the field or the one in the stands watching? Which one? The fittest one would be? 
on the field. The spectators are a little bit useless because they're not getting on the field. If you're just a spectator, you and you're not a player on the field, you will be a little bit like these guys. That is just sad. I'm gonna take my shirt. I look like the little guy. I'm like, yeah. And other guys are overweight, and the other ones are like thin. Okay. The, this is a picture of most youth, spiritually speaking. Okay? You guys look amazing in the physical, okay? But I'm talking spiritual now. This is what a bunch of you look like in the spirit. It is sad, huh? Come on, say it, it's sad. It's sad. Okay, so we're going to change it. We want to move you from there. Ladies, excuse us for a moment, but for the boys, the next one. That's where we want to go. So I don't get into the gym often enough, but I tell you, if you could see me in the spirit, I am giving a hiding to the enemy, okay? I'm clapping him. I'm clapping depression and fear and insecurity and lies of the enemy because in the spirit, I look like this. Oh, I wish I could look like this in the natural. Yeah, that would be lacking. Okay, but so we want to move you guys, go back to the previous one. From that to that. Yes. Come on, say bring it. Bring it. Yes. Okay, so what it means is when you look like this in the spirit, you overcome when people are ugly to you because you know who you are in Christ. You're not intimidated. You're not afraid. You're not anxious. It's exams and you're like, let's do this. Take you down, exam. Give me that pen. Take you down. Come on, say I'm going to take you down. Take you down, man. Okay, so you want to be this. This is where you win in life. This is where you win in life, where you can stand, you can follow God, and you can overcome. We have peace and joy. Huh? That's what God wants to do for you. Okay, so now go back to the soccer thing there. So traditionally, when it comes to youth ministry and church in general, it's sort of what's happening right now. You are spectating, I'm playing, because I'm speaking. I'm playing. I'm on the field I'm bringing it, you're spectating, okay? So what if we could change that around? What if you could become not just a spectator, but a player on the field? I want to show you how. So there's a church in Singapore, a church of 5,000 people. The average age is 22. That means like half the church is 13, 14, 15 year olds. And they are running the church like high-end fancy equipment and a whole lot of awesome things that they are doing. And I was reading this book and I was watching these videos and it blew my mind and I realized that's what we're doing wrong. We're trying to entertain. We're trying to make spectators of people instead of getting you onto the field. What's more fun, watching soccer or playing soccer? Playing soccer, absolutely, absolutely. It's way more fun to play. Hey, imagine we change school. And all the sport is played by your parents. All the plays are your parents. Would you come and watch? No. No. It'll be disastrous. Okay? And then it's the same with church and youth often. It's like other people play and you must come and watch. And it's just not engaging. So we want to change it. So I want to show you a quick video clip of this church in Singapore. I just want to give you a glimpse of what is possible. What can God do when Young people get onto the field. Okay, so play the video clip.
Okay, so that's just like a short clip. I'm going to show you another one in a moment. But what they, they, the pastors say that the parents come to them and they say, how are you doing this? Our kids don't want to do anything, but at your church, they are engaged. They are flourishing. And they say the reason is the, the young people are on the field. They are playing. So for instance, in, in that church, and that's what we want to do as well for you guys, we want to discover what gifts do you carry. So for instance, the one story, they're like a 13-year-old girl, and they're engaging with this girl, and they're like, you've got a great sense of humor. How can we leverage this for the kingdom, for Jesus? And they started like a drama thing where they have plays and things. But this young girl started, to, like, I've got a sense of humor. So she started to develop that. She started a TikTok channel, and she has over 200,000 followers now. Over 200,000 followers. And she is sharing on that channel about God and about what Jesus means to her. And hundreds of young people have been impacted for, for God for that. But she got onto the field. Someone said, hey, you've got a gift. Let's develop it. Okay? So here's a... a so, at, 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 so, so the mission is that in their church, they have young people in the bands, like 12-year-olds, 13-year-olds, um, they have young people running the soundboard, the sound engineering, the lighting, and so many other things. But the young people are engaged, and the result is things, there's they, something, they become players on the field. Okay, so let's play the second video clip. This is the behind the scenes, the media team, the guys that run all the things in the church service. I want to give you a glimpse of how they function. So behind this door, we have the Heart of God Church Media Control Room. Now, we've just finished our services for the weekend, and I hear that the young people were running the entire show. These are young people who come in at about the age of 11 or 12, and they get trained up from scratch, and they ultimately end up running the services for thousands of people. So come on in, and let's take a look. Now, I hear that uh, you two girls are in charge of everything. So tell me, what is it that you do? So I'm Charmaine, I coordinate eight different departments to make sure services run well. I'm Joelle uh, and I oversee the creative aspects of the service. So good. And how long have you guys been serving here? So I came into the media department when I was 12 and I became a supervisor when I was 15. So right now it has been seven years. I started serving in the lights department when I was 11 years old and now I've been in the media department for about nine years. So great. Come on over here and let's see what we got going on uh, what are you guys up to? So, uh, hi Dr. Robbie, I'm Ross and these are the slides that we put up on screen. Hang on, am I saying double here? Oh no, Dr. Robbie, you are not. I'm Rich and I'm a supervisor in the Lights Ministry while Ross, he is a supervisor in the Projection Ministry who does all the slides for our weekend services. So good. And how old are you guys? Um, we are 18 this year and we came to church when we were 12 and we started serving when we were 13. So cool. Come on over here, let's take a look around this area. Who do we have here? Hi, I'm Jared. And how old are you, Jared? I'm 14 this year. Now, I hear that you are the person in charge of having created all of the screens for praise and worship today. How on earth did you do that? My trainer, Jordan, trained me. So, you know, when I was 13, somebody actually trained me, and now I'm helping to train the next generation. This is actually really typical of Heart of God Church, a 13 or a 14-year-old being trained and mentored by a 16 or a 17-year-old, who in turn is being trained up or mentored by a 20-year-old. In fact, come on over here. Are you the guy who's in charge around here? What have we got going on? And uh, how many cameras do you control? Uh, yes, I'm in charge of all this and my name is Sing Yi. I'm 15 years old and I'm the youngest camera director in Hong Kong Church. And there are actually 16 cameras and I lead 10 people on the team and together as a team we capture the moments in service. So good. And Siggy, how long have you been uh, serving here? Uh, I started last year when I was 14 years old. Wow, that's amazing. Only one year in ministry and already the director. Uh, the young people at Heart of God Church, they're not just responsible for uh, expensive equipment, but they are trusted with tremendous responsibility to run the entire show. This is generation after generation. The Heart of God Church uh, leadership team really believe in raising up young people for generations to come. But don't take it from me. Don't trust my word. Come and check it out for yourself. Yeah, that's cool, eh? I mean, I, I was watching that. It just shifted my mindset. And so for our church's media team, we started to pull in a bunch of you guys um, on Sundays. And our production is just amazing. We've got six cameras now on Sundays. And we live stream. And it looks amazing. And it's 
a lot of teenagers doing it, doing this online audio sound engineering, which is just so cool. So I want you to catch a vision of what is possible. What is possible when young people get onto the playing field, when we, when you start doing ministry. So I want to say to you, Amplified Youth, if you buy into the vision, I want to say this is your ministry. In other words, the adults are not going to run it. The adults are not going to do it all. They're just going to, by the way, they're going to be the spectators. And we want you guys to be the players. Huh? How would that be? Huh? Come on. So we want to teach you. We want to train you. We want to show you how you can learn how to do a whole bunch of things um, to really be a player on the field. Okay, so there are three things, three missions that we're going to be focusing on going forward. We will unpack it in the weeks and months to go. But the, we want to answer this question. How do we move? We move. <laughs> Prophetic <laughs> moving to the door. Yes. We, we are moving prophetically out the door. And we're waving as well. Okay, we have no idea what's happening, but it's all good. Okay, so, <laughs> so the three missions is summarized as CSI. Okay, I don't know if you've ever seen, you probably shouldn't watch this show. I don't know how, if it, what age restriction is, but it's crime scene investigation. Come on, say crime scene investigation. CSI, okay, this is just so you can remember. CSI, okay, so the, the, we want to ask you how? Are we going to move spectators onto players? We want to make you strong. We want to make you fit. And we want to make you powerful. Remind us again. Remind us again of those, those arms. Yes. Yes, Jesus. All the boys want to have those arms. Yes. Come on. Okay. So we want to help you spiritually become strong. Strong. Okay. So CSI, the first one is connect. Okay. And this is connected to, to, the, to um, our connect groups. So, um, so the connect groups will be like three or four young people, same gender, sort of the same age, be together. So there's a, a, a football team in, a, in, in, a, in, in Britain, in the Premier League, the Liverpool. Who knows Liverpool? Okay, what's their slogan? You will never walk alone. You will never, come on, you, you'll never walk alone. Okay, this is critical. If you are a soldier in the army and you're walking onto the battlefield, if you're on your own, you're going to get killed. You're going to struggle. You're going to suffer. You're going to be like, oh, I'm on my own. That's really tough. Okay, so one of the slogans we want to embrace is you'll never walk alone. Come on, turn to the person next to you and tell them you're never going to walk alone. You'll never, you'll never walk alone. Never. Never, never walk alone. This is critical. This is critical. If you are walking on your own, you're going to find yourself in trouble. Doesn't matter your age, doesn't matter how mature you are in Jesus. If you walk on your own, you're in trouble, okay? But when you're together, look at this next image. If you're in battle with your buddy, you're like real weapons, back to back, Who's going to get slaughtered? The enemy. Depression, negativity, fear, anxiety, insecurity, all those things will get, you. the enemy is going to be taken out. Okay, and that's what we want to see happen. Which of you want to be really, really bold and confident in life? Huh? <laughs> bold, confident, without insecurities, without, who wants to be without fear, without anxiety? Okay, I believe that is possible when we begin to walk together in relationship with Jesus. But most of us have been doing it on our own. Okay, so even with um, my son Vian and Michal, um, they have said now on Mondays and Fridays at school, they're going to pray together during break. They're going to be on that battlefield. They're going to be back to back, take out their machine guns and shoot the hell of the enemy, okay? It's like, no, we're not going to be intimidated on the school grounds. No, we're not going to be anxious. No, we're not going to be bullied. No, we're going to be influenced by people that talk stupid. Come on, say it. I'm not going to be influenced by people that talk stupid. 
Yes, that's possible. But then you need to stand together. And when, when you're struggling, you need to go to your buddy and you say, hey, pray for me. Come on, let's just quickly pray. I want to just get, somebody said something stupid now. Somebody hurt me. Somebody's trying to, to mess with me. Come on, let's pray about this together. Mm, how does it sound? Because then you take out your guns, spiritual guns, and you say intimidation, fear, and stupid, go away. Okay? This is critical. This is critical. And we want to teach you. We want to train you how to position yourself in a place where you are strong in God. Okay? So the connect groups. You need to partner with other believers. Why do our wheels come off spiritually? It's because we're, some, we're walking alone. Come on, say, I'm never going to walk alone. Never. Come on, turn to the person next to you and say, hey, you'll never walk alone. Come on. You'll never walk alone. Never walk alone. Okay, so that, that's the first one. Come on, say connect. Connect. That's number one. Number two is serve. Serve. Okay, it's like I showed you that video of these, all these young people, they're getting into the game. And they are doing it together as a team and they're having a blast, they're having fun. When you find purpose, then you, you're going to feel way better about yourself. You're going to feel like, I'm adding value. Okay? You're engaged. You're on the field. You're playing the game. And it's fun. Okay? So here's a scripture, Ephesians 2.10. It says, let's read it together. For we are, read it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. Come on, say, I'm God's masterpiece. Come on, say, I silence the, the, the lies. Silence the lies. Yeah, the, the voice that tells you you don't matter, you, you, you don't, you're not a masterpiece, you're a mess, you, 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 you're rubbish, all of that. That's a lie from the pit of hell. And you just say, no, I'm a masterpiece. Come on, say it again. I'm a masterpiece. I'm a masterpiece. Yeah, a masterpiece. God has designed you perfectly, beautifully for your purpose. But then it goes on and says, he has created us anew. And it was in Jesus, when you have a living relationship with Jesus, he makes you new on the inside every day. And so I've given Vian and, and Michal, they've, they've done our destiny encounter, and they've taken these state, I am statements, and they take four or five of them every day to school. And then we're in the car, we declare it, and at, at school they declare it. They declare, I am a saint. I am free from sin. I am free from bondage. The enemy has nothing in me. I'm a child of God. I have the nature of God. So as you proclaim scripture, it's like it changes you. It changes something on the inside. Okay, so there's one of the things we want to help you with, making those statements, declarations of truth, so that you can step into your true identity. You see, the enemy wants to distort your identity. He wants to tell you through people treating you wrong or saying the wrong stuff. He's like, you don't matter. Come on, say it. that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You need to embrace the truth that you matter to God. But so you need to connect first. Then secondly, you need to serve. So it says that so we can do so that we can do the good things. Come on, say good things. Good things. He planned for us long ago. Okay, so, so before you were born, God planned good works for you. Not when you're 65, while you're at school. Imagine that you could find the will of God at school in the next two years, the next year. The next six months, you can, the things God planned for you way before you were born is he planned you to flourish, to be a child of God, to be secure in Jesus. And guess what? To maybe impact somebody else with the love of God. Just one person. Impact somebody's life because you were nice to them when they were being treated like dirt and you reached out to them. You maybe prayed for them. You encouraged them. Maybe you invited them to youth and their life has been changed forever. That is the good things he planned for you before you were born. Come on, do you believe there's a purpose for you at high school? You need to believe it. Because if you don't believe you have a purpose, you're going to fall for anything. You're going to find yourself in a bad space. Okay, so come on, say it. I'm God's masterpiece. Right, so here are some things we want to encourage you to do. 
So areas you can get serving, okay? So we're going to give you an opportunity even tonight to write down maybe three things that you maybe one, two, three areas, three areas you want to get involved with. Let's put, put on the, um, the list. So we want to upgrade the venue next door, okay? We're going to put in lights. We're going to put in fancy lights. We're going to add a whole bunch of things in the venue next door um, to, to make it really cool, but you guys need to run it. Okay, so here's some options. Sound engineering, because we're going to have a youth band soon. And we're going to do auditions in the next few weeks, okay? Just off the exams. <laughs> we're going to do auditions, and uh, we want you guys to, 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 to come to for, the, for the auditions. Again, my son is playing the drums like an, an animal, an animal, okay? He was practicing with a main church band on Thursday evening. So proud of him, so proud of him. Okay, and so, so if you play an instrument, if you sing when you join. Okay, so sound engineering, we're going to teach you how to use the sound desk. Then media and lighting, we're going to get a lighting controller. We're going to teach you how to use the lighting controller. I'm trusting we're going to have some moving lights and things for fun. We're going to add some smoke machines and just have some fun with the, with the youth band. Okay, the auditions. Then social media. Some of you, if you want to get involved with social media, we are going to give you an opportunity to post things on social media that will God be fun and God glorifying. We're trusting to have some fun with it. And then we're going to start a TikTok channel. Okay? So we're going to start like a drama group. You're going to act things out. So you're going to, we're going to write scripts and then we're going to act things out. And we're going to have a blast because you're going to learn in the process. You learn by stepping out. And you're probably going to have to practice some moves. <laughs> eh? Some moves, okay? <laughs> Vianna said, Vianna and me, we're going to do a few moves for TikTok, eh? Okay, so we're going to do a few moves. Maybe even we can do like a youth, like a whole youth move thing. And we can put that on TikTok and have some fun. But the thing is to have some fun and impact somebody's life with it. Okay, so we're going to have a welcome team on Friday evenings to say hi to young people and to tell, tell the parents, go away. And then, <laughs> okay, but no, no, that'd be ugly to the parents. Okay, welcome team. Okay, next page. Then we um, set up getting the venue next door ready, get the atmosphere ready, get things ready. Tuck shop, people help in the tuck shop with the skits, actors and directors. And obviously videography, we've got a whole lot of equipment um, that we're going to, Put into your hands. Woo! I'm letting go. I'm letting go. I'm letting go of tens and thousands of rands of equipment. God help us. Okay. So we also want you guys to develop maybe some photography. And so uh, every time we do something, there's some of you are going to be taking photos. We're going to post it on social media. You're going to learn how to. We've got some. We're going to, we got a really cool media PC over here, video editing PC. In this venue, we're going to upgrade that other PC on the other side. But then you can edit things and you can have a blast. And then also, obviously, be part of the ministry and prayer team. Lekker. Because huh? when you give, that's when you grow. And so what we want to do is, I haven't told anybody yet this, I think, but this is just so, by the way. So, so the question is, when is this going to happen? Because Friday nights, we're going to, do like we normally do, but just upgrade everything and you guys are going to run the show. But then, so what we want to do is, is to like Saturday afternoons, not every Saturday, but maybe most Saturday, I don't know. But Saturday afternoons, we're going to open the venues up. We're going to have some people to just make sure everything's okay. And then the rest of you, the band's going to practice. People that want to do skits and write and gonna, you're going to brainstorm together. But like Saturday, because well, what the heck are you doing on Saturday afternoons in any case? <laughs> Just lazing around, probably. Okay, but so we want to get you guys to come on, say, on Saturday. We can do other times as well, but I'm just thinking like Saturday afternoons, we can look school holidays when this, when you guys are not doing much. Get, come in here and, 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 and brainstorm and band practices. We can practice here. You can practice. That's a two spaces to practice at the same time. So Jono, one of our, our drummers who plays keyboard as well, and he sings a bit, I think, as well. He's going to be leading the youth band. He's going to be direct, you know, leading you guys and training you guys and helping you. Okay. It's going to be awesome. Come on, say it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Okay. <laughs> I, re I really believe it is. So we're going to get from the churches, so we're going to get guys into do sound engineering training. And when you guys got it, then you're going to train others. As that church that I showed you, every three years, they say that's the next generation. Next generation. So you train the next generation, the next generation. Okay? So we want you to learn, and then you're going to train others. That's the plan. 
Okay, so CSI, spectators to players, put on the slide again, so it's connect, serve, and then impact. Impact on the next slide, you see like, <laughs> impact, okay? Because when you impact, then you, that is when the, that's when the army of God arise. Is when then there's going to be impact. Okay, so that's so we're going to connect with one another. We're going to have fun. We're going to help one another. We're going to start flourishing. We're going to serve and be together at times and brainstorm stuff and have fun and do videos and whatever else. And then we are trusting for impact. Okay, so the, the social media will be part of the impact. The TikTok channel, that kind of thing. We want to get that drama group going. Okay, so we're going to play out some stuff and have fun with that. And then the one thing we're also going to do. So in the next slide, you can see there's a guy's doing some TikTok stuff. <laughs> Something like that. Okay, and then, and then, <laughs> and then we wanna we wanna do an evangelism boot camp. Okay. So on the next slide, let me let me let me tell you something. When you are walking onto the battlefield and you have been armed with a feather duster. How confident are you going to be? So not confident, huh? So not confident. That's how most people feel like, they feel like, I can't talk to somebody about Jesus. I don't know what to say. I don't know where to start. Okay, so we're going to teach you, we're going to train you, we're going to equip you how to have conversations with others about faith, and we're gonna teach you to answer the most difficult arguments. We're gonna help you short things, easy things, like very, you cut straight to the heart. We're gonna teach you how. Because I tell you, you're gonna come alive. You know, when I, when I was a young believer, um, I never knew how to, to share my faith until I was taught some of the things we're gonna teach you, and then I was like, I can talk to anybody at any time about Jesus. It rocked my world. And who would like to tell somebody about Jesus and see them turn to Christ? Because eh? again, we want to arm you. Some, because some of you look like these boys. Again, unfortunately. Okay. So I want to remind you again. This is what you look like in the spirit. Some, just some of you. Okay. Just some of you. I want to be ugly, but that's some of you. But we want to get you to the next slide. Okay. We want to get you back to back with these guns. We want to give you real guns, real spiritual guns. We want to equip you to know how to share your faith, it's gonna transform you. When you move from a spectator to a player on the field, it changes you. And the thing that's gonna be awesome is you're not gonna do it alone, okay? So we wanna encourage you, we're gonna help you with this as well, but we wanna encourage you to find a friend, well, first you're in your connect group, we're gonna break into connect groups in a moment, but then we're gonna, you need to find somebody at school that you can pray with, okay? So that's like phase number one, find somebody at school you can pray with, okay? So we're gonna, in your connect groups, we're gonna trust God together for that, to reach out and to invite somebody maybe to the youth, but we're gonna just start with one, just get one partner, come on, say one partner. Just one, just one, that's all you need, just one other person to start praying with, okay? Um, but you can start in your connect groups even if there's not somebody in your school yet, okay? And then you can start moving forward to other things. So I wanna end off with this. This, uh, before, maybe before I, I, I read the scripture. Other hi highlight, we're gonna do a youth camp, okay? Youth camp, okay? So that's gonna give you, is really gonna build, we're gonna build up the connect and the serve and the impact at the youth camp. Okay, so third term, we are trusting to do a youth camp. We have a tentative date. We're gonna give it through to you guys soon. Okay, so ending off with this, the heavenly vision. Okay, so the apostle Paul, he had a massive impact on the world. And he was once asked sort of his story. So he's speaking to this king, this Roman king, and he was sharing with him the heavenly vision he received and he said, to the guy, yes. He said, this is what God spoke to me. He said, yes, I am sending you to the Gentiles. That was Paul's mission. What if God is saying to you right now, I am sending you to your school to change somebody's life? Just one. Start with one. You get a partner. You gang up. And you bully others into the kingdom. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But I'm just saying, 
let's do good bullying instead of bad bullying. Okay, no, no, don't, don't bully. It's just loving people passionately into the kingdom, okay? That was a bad joke. Bad joke. Okay, but so, so, so God said to Paul, I am sending you. Come on, say it. God is sending me. To my friends. Okay, come on. You need to believe this. You need to believe this. Verse 18. To open their eyes so they may turn from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God. If somebody doesn't know Jesus, they're in another kingdom, the kingdom of darkness. They have no ability to overcome their fear and the lies of the enemy. But we're going to equip you guys. And then the next slide says, Then they will receive forgiveness for their sins and be given a place among God's people. Be given a place, what? Amongst us here Amplified Youth. Mm, Believe it with me. Come, believe this with me. And then, who are set apart by faith in me. So Paul says, this was the heavenly vision. When you catch a glimpse of the heavenly vision, you realize that that's you. So that's God calling. Are you listening? You know, see, God speaks through people like me. He's speaking to you. Saying, are you listening? Okay, and then the last verse, verse 19, and says, and so King Agrippa, speaking to the king, he said, I obeyed that vision from heaven. And tonight's a vision night. Vision from heaven. Come on, put on that glasses again, the VR glasses. Come on, you need to see it with the eyes of your heart. You need to see that God can move you from being a spectator to a player, from being on the sidelines to be a soldier in the, in the army of God and together impacting somebody with the love of Jesus. Come on, say, I'm, I'm going to be a player on the field. The field of the kingdom of God, yes. So I want to end up with this video clip. Now this is... Reinhard Bonnke, he's a German, he's got a funny accent, you'll hear a funny accent. He's a German evangelist, and he's traveled through Africa, and they have in their ministry, more than 80 million people have committed their lives to Jesus. 80 million, eight zero. So they have crowds of up to 2 million people in one meeting. 2 million people, 1.7 million people, one meeting. And this video clip is about Reinhard Bonnke in this vision. He's passed away, but then there's a young man that took up the baton from him. His name is Daniel Kalender. And so you'll see some video shots from when Daniel was in his 20s. He's now about 40, but in his 20s, and he started to preach the gospel. But it's like this baton was handed over from the older generation to the younger generation. But I'm like, what if we hand the, the, that baton over to the even younger generation? Again, I just wanted you to sketch a glimpse of the power of God. If God can rock Africa like you're going to see on this video now, I tell you, He can impact your school and your friends and change your life. Come on, say it. There's always hope in Jesus. Come on, say, I renounce hope in, I renounce hopelessness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's watch the video. Jesus.
Jesus Christ, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess of things in heaven, on earth, and under the earth that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Say amen. I heard she had sickle cell. Yeah, sickle cell anemia. So she couldn't do this before. No more pain. No more pain. No more. You can feel it. I only have one desire. I want hell empty and heaven full. I speak to every crippled leg and I command every crippled leg to receive strength right now in the name of Jesus. Powerful or what? Come on, stand with me. Come on, let's give Jesus praise for that. Let's give him a, a clap offering. Put our hands together. You see, God is working. He's working. He's moving. And he's changing lives. The, the message of Jesus is not just a nice story. It literally is heaven or hell. If you don't know Jesus, you cannot enter heaven. You can only enter heaven if your sins are forgiven and you are washed clean by the blood of Jesus. Now the blood of Jesus sounds weird, eh? but it's like super homo, spiritually speaking. Washes you clean. Eh? God wants to wash you clean and make you new. He says He wants to turn you from darkness to light, from depression to joy, from being bound by nonsense to freedom. That is the heart of God. He loves you so much. He loves you so much. And I tell you, behind you right now, there's another 10 of your friends that do not know Jesus. And they need you. They need you to go and tell them and show them what it looks like to follow Jesus. But so before we get to, I wanna, I wanna pray, pray a prayer of commission of you guys to, to um, commission this new season.